Hello students, this is Professor Chalai, and in this video we're going to look at phase diagrams. As always, you can follow along with our chapter 10 workbook. By the end of this video, you should be able to explain the use of a typical phase diagram, you should be able to use phase diagrams to identify various states of matter, and you should be able to de uh, describe what a supercritical fluid is. Let's begin. I know our last video was very uh, lengthy, so I'll try to make this one short. We know that the pressure and the temperature affects what state of matter or what phase of matter uh, something is in. For example, let's look at pressure, right? Let's say you have some molecules, I don't know, we'll draw a few of them, interacting with each other through intermolecular forces, right? Um, so let's say this is in some box. What if we were to compress that box, but we have the same molecules now, closer together, those intermolecular forces might be stronger. And so, in order to break those intermolecular forces, you need more energy. So, this is uh, an example with sort of pressure. And like, same thing for temperature, right? Temperature determines the kinetic energy that a molecule has. And so, the higher the temperature, the more likely it is to break its, um, its intermolecular forces and become uh, a liquid if it was a solid or a gas if it was a liquid. So pressure and temperature, we know, generally changes what's, uh, what phase of matter we're looking at. And so if you want to figure out how the temperature and pressure changes what the state of matter is, we're looking, um, we'll be using what we call phase diagrams. A phase diagram is simply a diagram like this with pressure on one axis and temperature on another axis, and it tells us exactly what state of matter um, something will be in if we're at a certain temperature or pressure. Now, I want to point out in this diagram, as with most phase diagrams, you might see uh, what we call a logarithmic scale, right? For example, here to here is 100, but from here to here is another 274. Those don't seem even, but that's because we're using a log scale. Uh, same for the y-axis. We use log scales uh, just so that we could show a wider range of temperatures and a wider range of um, pressures. Okay, so what are we looking at here? Well, we see that if we're at any of these pressures and temperatures, we should have a solid. If we're at any of these pressures and temperatures, we're going to have a liquid. And then if we're any of these pressures or temperatures, we're going to have a gas. And then there's one more up here that we call a critical point that I'm going to talk about uh, in a second. So this is the phase diagram for water. But every substance, we could potentially create a phase diagram similar to this. Let's, let's look at this. We know at zero degrees and atmospheric pressure, that's where ice forms from water. And so that's the phase boundary between solid and liquid, right? Similarly, 100 degrees Celsius and 101 kilopascals, right? That's atmospheric pressure. That's the phase diagram, uh, the phase boundary, if you will, between liquid water and water vapor or gas. Really, all of these boundaries are giving us different uh, processes. If we go from ice to water, right, that's when melting happens. Or freezing, if you go backwards, right, freezing. Uh, water to uh, water vapor, this is um, evaporating. And then backwards is condensation. Condensation. And then going straight from a solid here to a gas, this is where sublimation happens and deposition. So here where different um, different phenomena happen. So let's see how we can use one of these by looking at number 21. It is asking us by looking at the phase diagram above, determine the state of water at, let's say, let's use negative 10 degrees Celsius and 50 kilopascals. So uh, I'll use this color. So negative 10 degrees Celsius here is zero. So that might be somewhere here. So negative 10 degrees Celsius and 50 uh, kilopascals might be somewhere there. We're so in the solid region uh, of the phase diagram. So this should be a solid. I'm going to erase some of this so that we can see what we're working with. Um, OK, let's look at number B. Or try the others on your own. And then, um, I mean, they're pretty straightforward. Try them on your own, and then we'll see what we get. So let's look at B. 25 degrees Celsius and 90 kilopascals. Uh, since this is a logarithmic scale, it's hard to tell exactly where 25 is, but it might be somewhere here. So 25 degrees Celsius, 50 kilopascals might be somewhere here. We're in a liquid phase, right? So this would be liquid. 
50 degrees Celsius and 40 kilopascals. So 50 degrees Celsius might be somewhere here. 40 kilopascals might be somewhere here. It's uh, that one's really hard to tell. It could be a liquid. It could be a gas. Um, because again, we don't have. Uh, I don't have. I don't know exactly where 50 degrees Celsius is on this graph. It might be somewhere there. Okay. So you can do the others for practice, um, but it's pretty straightforward. You just look at the temperature and the pressure and try to figure out what state of matter um, the material, the substance would be in. Note that uh, at 0.6 kilopascals and 0 0.01 degrees Celsius is what we call the triple point of water. It's the, it's the temperature and pressure where e any of the three phases of water can exist at the same time, solid, liquid, or gases. So you can create a mixture of water with all three states of matter, at, but only at that specific temperature and pressure. All right, now let's, um, let's look at uh, number 22. Uh, so number 20 sa 22 says, what are the different phase changes that can happen to water as it undergoes uh, for a, a temperature change, but the pressure is held constant at 0.3 kilopascals. So 0.3 kilopascals is somewhere here below the 0.6 kilopascals. So we're saying that the pressure stays the same, but the temperature changes. So all uh, will go from a solid to a gas. So the only thing that can happen is we go from a solid to a gas. So the only thing that can happen there is a sublimation. Right, that's the only phase change that can happen, going from a solid to a gas. Try uh, B, C, and D on your own. Okay, so let's look at B. It says that the temperature changes, but the pressure is held constant at 50 kilopascals, which is somewhere here. So uh, the pressure will be constant, but the temperature changes, so we'll go from a solid to a liquid to a gas. So here we'll go from a solid to a liquid to a gas. So the different phase changes, we'll have solid to liquid, we'll have melting and uh, vaporization or boiling. Okay, um, let's look at C. The pressure changes, but the temperature is held constant at zero degrees Celsius. So here we have zero degrees Celsius. We'll start, uh, if the pressure increases, we'll start with a gas, we'll go to a solid, and then we'll go to a liquid. It seems weird, right? We start with a gas, then we go to a solid, then we go to a liquid as we change the pressure. But water is weird, so, you know, that's what we have to work with. So we start with a gas, then we go to a solid, then we go to a liquid. So gas to a solid, that is deposition. Deposition. And solid to a liquid, melting. And then you can try B on your own uh, as well. So that's really how we use phase diagrams. It's just a way to tell us what phase we'll be in when we have a certain pressure or a certain temperature and what phase we'll change to if we change the pressure or we change the temperature. Okay, there's one other thing I wanna point out uh, is here and that's the critical point. So I pointed out the triple point where all three phases of matter can exist at the same time at the same pressure and temperature. And then there's a critical point the critical point is interesting because if you are above that temperature, so that's on this side, and you're above that pressure up here, so this little, if I extend out this graph, so if you're sort of in this region here, sort of above the critical point with a higher temperature and higher pressure, you are, um, you're in, a, in an interesting phase that we call uh, a supercritical fluid. So where's my definition? Right here. So a supercritical fluid is simply a phase of matter where you're not really a gas and you're not really a liquid. You're some weird mixture of the two. So a supercritical fluid, critical fluid is a hybrid, I'm gonna call it hybrid phase of matter somewhere between a liquid and a gas. And our textbook has some interesting um, applications of this and some interesting, yeah, some interesting applications. And so the critical point um, determines 
the critical temperature and the critical pressure above which the supercritical flu uh, phase exists. So the supercritical phase occurs above the critical temperature and critical pressure. And that's it. Um, here we have some examples of some critical temperatures and pressures for various uh, substances. Um, all of these pressures are well beyond atmospheric pressure, so you may not be able to observe this um, at, at, you know, on a lab desk, for example. But there we have it, phase diagrams. I hope this video was kept short. Uh, it just gives us the different phases of matters for different pressures and temperatures. Uh, we learned about the triple point, and we learned about the critical point above which we have the supercritical phase. All right, in our next video, we're going to look at the solid state of matter. So we looked at the whole chapter in gases, and the beginning bits of this chapter looked at uh, liquids and how they can change and some of their properties. Uh, yep, in our next video, we're going to look at solid, and that will round off this uh, semester's worth of chemistry. I'll see you then. Bye.